Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 129, it's on gas pressure. This clock to the left is measuring time, but on the bottom it's measuring air pressure, which would be gas pressure in the atmosphere itself. What's interesting is as it decreases we get stormy weather, as it increases we get dry weather. Why is that? Well, as the air in the atmosphere is all pushing out, if it's a high pressure, it's descending and we're going to have clear weather. But if it's a low pressure, that means the air is moving up. It'll hit a dew point and we're generally going to have cloudy and rainy weather. Now you could build a barometer if you wanted to. All you do is take some gas, trap it in a container. We could use a balloon with a rubber band over the surface of it. So we've got a set amount of gas inside the jar. We could then tape a straw to the top, mark some uh, high and low points on a piece of paper behind the barometer and then as the air pressure outside the jar increases it's going to be pushing down and so that straw is going to go up this is a high pressure. As it relaxes there's not as much pressure on the surface if it's a low air pressure then it's going to let that pressure on the inside exert a, a force and it's going to move up. Now we're going to measure low pressure. And if you were to correlate that to what the weather's like, when it's low pressure, stormy cloudy. When it's high pressure, it's going to be a clear day. And so gas exerts a force on the container in which it's in. It's bouncing around. And so that force over the given area is equal to the pressure. How much force is that gas exerting on the surface of the container? Another way to measure that pressure is it's the change in momentum. As those gas molecules collide with the container, how much does their momentum change? What's neat about gas is since it's randomly moving around, that gas pressure is going to be uniform throughout. So if we have a one pressure here, it's the same as the pressure on the left side or the pressure on the inside of the container itself. So what is pressure? Pressure is a force exerted per unit unit area. So to give you a sense of what uh, pressure is measured in pascals, imagine I take a box that's a 10 newton box. And so this is going to be a really large box. It's four meters on one side, one meter on the other, and, and two on the third side. And so how much pressure is exerted on the table well, we have to calculate the force, which I've already done. It's 10 newtons. And then we have to figure out what's the area on which it's pressing. Well, if you look at this box and we assume that the underside is blue as well, it's just the blue side that's impacting the table itself. And so what's our force? It's going to be 10 newtons. What's the area? Well, we calculate the area by taking 4 by 1, length times width, and that's going to be 4 meters squared. So what's going to be my pressure? It's going to be 2.5 pascals, which is a really low number. If we were to take that same exact box, however, and turn it on its side like this, would the pressure change? Well, for sure. That's because 10 newton box again, we're pressing down on a smaller area. And so our force is still going to be 10 newtons. What's the area? It's the green side now pressing down 2 times 1. And so our area is 2 meters squared. So our, our pressure is going to be 5.0 pascals. And so if it's a smaller area, we're going to have a greater pressure. Now what's interesting about gas is it's what's inside the container. Or it could be the air pressure on the outside of the container itself. It's not an object. It's actually the molecules colliding that are creating the pressure. So if we look at this PHET simulation, this measures pressure in atmospheres instead of pascals. One atmosphere is going to be 101 kilopascals, and that gives you a sense of how much pressure is inside the gas. So if I add some molecules to the container, what are we getting? Well, we're starting to read pressure on the inside. It's colliding with the, the sides of the container. As I increase the number of molecules, watch what happens to the pressure. Again, they're colliding with each other in the container and we're getting an increase in the pressure. How else could we increase the pressure? If we increase temperature, we could increase the pressure. If we decrease the size of the container, we could inc increase pressure as well. And so what's happening, the molecules are colliding with the sides of the container and that's what's creating this pressure. What's interesting is if we take a gauge that measures that, no matter where I put that gauge, even inside the container, it's gonna be uniform throughout. And that's important when you're solving problems like this. Calculate the force exerted on a piston if we know what the pressure is, 435 pascals, and we know the area of the piston itself. So the first thing you have to realize is that since the pressure is uniform throughout this container, what's going to be the pressure pushing on the piston? 
it's 435 kilopascals, or 435 rather pascals. So I set up my formula, pressure equals force over area. I'm solving for force, I know pressure and area, and so this is a pretty easy problem. So I'll multiply do both sides by area, so I can isolate force on the left side, and then I simply calculate it by multiplying those two values. So it'd be a 78 Newton force exerted on that piston. And so did you learn to make claims about how the pressure is tied to the force exerted by the molecules on the area of the container? And then finally, pressure is force over area. And so if you know two of those values, you can calculate the other one. And I hope that was helpful.